Music is in every single society in the world. Music is in our bodies, our heartbeat. I mean, it starts with that. Music is the essence of our, of our life. And I think it's the essence of our society, it's the essence of our culture. You know, when you talk about and you go around to different worlds and different, different countries, the things that make them unique is their music and their art and their dance. It's not their math. Everyone's doing the same stuff, but everyone's not doing the same stuff musically or art artistically or dance. So it, it's sort of like our heritage. It's like our trademark. It's our signature. It's, it's the essence of who we are. I'm going to say I start my musical uh, world began at age 12, something like that. Uh, when I was in India, I went to a private boarding school. We had music once a week, and uh, that's when I was introduced to the classics. And I had the opportunity to take violin lessons once a week, and we were in, in school choir as well. Teaching kind of I was kind of lured into teaching because of personal issues. I wanted to go into the professional world of conducting. Uh, when I saw my training versus what kind of character, it, uh, that life shaped me up. <laughs> and I was married and I went into teaching. That was the uh, way to go for me. Therefore, you are in the key of? D major. D major, not sure. Yes! When I began teaching in 1980, I started choir and band in a small community. Uh, I was hired there to teach from grade 6 through 12. So that was my job description. And uh, one thing leads to the other. And when I was hired in this district, Sheridan School District Number 2, 1983, I was hired as an elementary orchestra teacher and junior high orchestra and choir teacher. And when this position opened up, they told me, well, Sarkisian, now you're going to be involved with our high school students as well. My first uh, contact with the beginning students at the junior high are the sixth graders. Now, these kids, they know me, but they don't know my style. So I need to introduce my expectations and uh, and my teaching style to these kids that I'm here mainly to make sure they they meet, they fulfill the educational goal. And I put them in the comfort zone that I'm here to help them become successful in learning. And uh, that is my main uh, uh, trust in teaching. And once the students understand, come to realize that I'm genuine in my effort, then they continue the process through high school. As a teacher, I need to make sure my administration, my parents, my students, they all are on the same page, okay? Everyone needs to know what it is that we are doing. And when I see everyone thinking the way I am thinking, then success happens in learning. And when one group of people are out of the loop of learning, then it becomes very challenging. If I'm working very hard in class, if the student I see is working very hard, but there's no parental support, then my job is not 100% done. So I need parental support, administrative support, and of course the student support mm -hmm. into the cycle of learning, so to speak. The second movement? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm so I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry.
I was bad. Simo. I work very hard to bring intelligence to what I do in my work, all right? And uh, when students see that honest effort and uh, integrity in what I do, then they gravitate. Then that, they gravitate to what I'm teaching, and that bonds our relationship. Care, you know, I, I really want you to be successful, and this is, the, this, this is the reason why you need to be successful, and here are the steps that will take you to be a successful learner. I always liked music because people like things they're good at. And it was something I felt I could do and I was kind of successful at. I mean, I would sing and people would be like, hey, that was, that was all right. So I liked it. Um, I probably didn't really think about music or anything until maybe seventh grade. And Mr. Sarkissian was my choir teacher. And, uh, and then I was hooked and I just, I kept singing all through high school and college. I, I was bound and determined I wasn't going to be a music teacher as a high school student because why would I do something that was easy? That was just so stupid. I should go find a real job and do something really hard and challenging and, and you know, I was going to be a nurse for a while and then I was, you know, I had all these ideas of what I was going to do and I kept finding myself in college in the music wing and um, I actually went to Sheridan College as a freshman and um, as a music major and, and then I was like, well, I did 23 credits my first year and I was like, this is easy. You know, I don't really have homework and why, why am I doing this? I should challenge myself. So I went to Black Hill State and um, changed my major to a social services major and <laughs> did that for a while and that's when I kept finding myself in the music wing all the time. And I missed it so much and I was like, well this is ridiculous. Why can't I have fun and do something I love? So I changed back to a music major. This is my 11th year teaching high school now, and um, I love high school kids. They're, they're fun, they're funny, they have sense of humor, they have personality. They're, it, it's all the struggles and angst of life. Um, and I like to help those kids realize, you know, it may be really, really terrible right now today, but it's not always good to be terrible, and you're gonna look back on this and go, oh my gosh, why did I think that was so terrible? This is nothing. And it's just, I, I, love watching, I love watching the seasons of high school. Uh, sports seasons, um, musical seasons, all that changing, you know, every year there's a prom. Uh, so I like the predictability of it, but I really, really like to see the growth in students, especially like ninth grade to senior. What I want to do and, and what I want to do in the worst way is I, for just one day I'd like to take the music out of everything. No radio, no TV commercials, no music with movies, no music anywhere and then see if people notice because they sure don't seem to notice when they don't have music in the schools. And it appears that um, lots of places are just teaching to the ACT because the ACT is their high mucky muck level of this is how I know we're a good school because we have this ACT score. Um, and the thing that people need to start realizing is they need to start making that collaboration and that connection between educating the whole person. Because who would want to live in a world with a bunch of people that can do linear equations but have no idea, you know, how to help out a neighbor? They have no idea how to enjoy anything. I was moving around the country. My father had left our family. We'd gone to live with my aunt for a short period of time in Portland, and her son was a concert pianist. So he started teaching me when I was about seven, I want to say. And he was strict, really strict, like you would play everything ten times perfectly before you went on. 
So if you played it nine times, you made a mistake, you start all over again with one. So, so I had a strong background about perfection early on. Um, I wanted to play saxophone or flute, actually, um, but my family was very poor. We didn't have any money, so I couldn't really afford to be uh, in any instrument. So when band started, I didn't get to start. And then I had an uncle who was a professional musician, played trumpet um, in the big bands in the 40s, and he died of tuberculosis and sent his trumpet back to my grandmother's house. And so I found it, and I took it upstairs <laughs> to my brother's bedroom in the summer one time, and it had a book in there on fingerings and then a book of school songs from around the nation. So I taught myself to play trumpet that summer upstairs in my brother's bedroom. I started teaching because I, I wanted to be a musician and there wasn't any other field available for me to stay and, and play my trumpet all day and be around musicians. So the only thing I could do was be in music education. So I went to college and became a music teacher. <laughs> Finding a starting point is really hard. The, f the most important thing I understand is that the kids buy into the program and buy into me. That there's a connection, they want to do this and they want to please me. That's a really important aspect of all teaching. When you go into a classroom, if you hate your teacher, <laughs> you're going to go out of your way to not do well in that class so you show them. So making a connection with the class is really important. Um, being positive, I think that's the f first thing you have to do. Uh, but it's not easy when you get a class and all of a sudden you say, we have to play a pep band in four days. <laughs> okay, tell me a little bit about yourself. I don't have that time. You know, so you just have to delve in. And, and, and some nights I go home and think, oh, good job. And some nights I go home and think, oh, new job. i got to do something else. It's difficult to teach adults. I tried that once. And I tried to teach them how to play a saxophone or a couple other instruments. And they don't want to be wrong. So if you tell them to do something, they either say, I can't or they make some excuse for why they won't. Yeah, but teenagers, they're, they're still um, moldable. You can still mold them <laughs> because they're still um, in a place where they are willing to learn. band is the main part of the music program. It is the most valuable part of the music program and the part that I really enjoy the most as far as conducting. The most musical value comes from symphonic band. A wide, rich variety of music, you know, genres that we play. Um, the hardest part about that is making sure that you give every student enough attention. Because with a huge class, you can overlook a quiet student very easily. And so you can work with this group and this group and this group. And sometimes I'll go home and think, when's the last time I talked to this child in class? Because they can be left out of the loop. So that's the hard part, making sure that everybody feels valued. Because they are. They're valued by me. But if I don't address them individually, sometimes I think they don't feel that way. So that's tough, getting to know them personally and making contact each day personally. What I like about percussion class is it's a smaller group. Uh, and prior to coming to Sheridan High School, I always taught lessons to each of my kids, so we knew each other really well. And when I came here, I was facing bands of 50 and 60 kids, and then to get to know the kid in row four, if they're quiet, is really hard. Percussion is small groups, 10, 12, 14 kids, so we, and the same kids year after year. So we become family, and that closeness makes the class a lot of fun. Maybe medicine, somewhere that if you were upbeat and hopeful, that that would have a positive impact on other people, which is kind of what teaching is all about. You, you're upbeat and you, the kids, you're hopeful that they can learn and they, they sense that you, you, you believe in them. So I think medicine maybe, or maybe supermodel. <laughs>
My father was a professional trumpet player in the big band era, so I always heard him practicing and playing, and, and uh, later on I got to hear him play professionally. And so he started teaching me trumpet, and I just learned from a very young age that that's what I wanted to do. We listened to a lot of classical music and a lot of jazz, uh, early big band jazz, Stan Kenton, Harry James, those kinds of things. And so music was always in the house before I even got into music in school. So that's kind of where I got introduced to it first. It wasn't until probably my junior year in high school that I finally made the decision to go into music as a career. I was actually thinking about electrical engineering. And I ran into a couple math classes that I didn't do very well in, and there were some music classes offered at the same time, so I dropped the math classes and added the music classes, and the rest is history, as they say. Mr. Moore, the nice guy that he is, is providing donuts for you. So when you see him that day, thank him. I started teaching in high school. I, uh, I started teaching other kids in high school. I started teaching my high school marching band. I wrote shows for my high school marching band. I taught them. So I got into teaching and music education way long before I got certified. And, and way, but my actual career started, I graduated from high school in 77. So five years later was like 82. So that was my first job. Um, 81, so I've been teaching ever since, so almost 29 years now. I came to Sheridan, this is my 13th school year. I came to Sheridan as the high school band director, and for, I don't know exactly, but for seven or eight or nine years, I was the high school band director. I was experiencing a lot of what I thought was deficiencies in the student's education uh, at the junior high level into the high school, and I had I felt like I had to do a lot of teaching of junior high concepts at the high school level and so I was trying to get that kind of taken care of so we started teaching uh, not necessarily started teaching better but starting teaching different things and the focus at the junior high became more skill development whereas the focus at the high school should be and can be more performance oriented it's hard for the high school focus to be more performance oriented if you get freshmen coming in who can't read music I can only take a group as far as they can go and so I have to find out where they are by kind of finding out what they know, what they're capable of doing, and then trying to take them as far as they can. I try and build relationships based on respect, but mostly based on respect of the expectations and, and behaving appropriately. Um, and telling and showing them that I care because you know there's an old saying around educational world they're not gonna know they're not gonna care what you know until they know you care. So um, but I also feel that students are not gonna learn unless they have learned to listen first. I hope that I encourage and motivate and, and always try and put a carrot in front of them saying, you could be better, you could do this better if you just worked harder. A lot of people in music especially think it's just talent. It has very little to do with talent. It has all to do with how hard they work. I mean, people say, well, I'm not very good, I'm not talented in music. Okay, then you need to work harder because you can do it. I don't think there's anybody in my classes that cannot be musical and cannot do music. It just, some of them are gonna have to work harder. A one and two and 33, right?